record on this. There we go. We are speaking with the one and only Steve Augeri. Uh, the new album, or not the new album, but the new single uh, out now is called If You Want. And of course, the album uh, Seven Ways Till Sunday will be out later this year. Uh, more details as that comes along. But as we say here in Montreal, bonjour, Steve. Comment allez-vous? How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well, Mitch. Um, I'm happy to be uh, with you and uh, talking about talking shop. And, ta yeah, and talking music. By the way, you great background. I mean, you've got all those guitars and all that. I mean, that looks, that's, that's some good looking stuff back there. But talk to me about uh, about this album. So you, you've decided to put the single out now and it's doing very well on uh, YouTube and Spotify. People are, are, are enjoying it. Um, what did you want to do with this album? Did you want to give them sort of uh, this is Journey Without Journey? This is Taiketo Without Taiketo? This is what is the album for fans that just don't know about it? Well, uh, to make a, to be quite honest, yeah. of course, I've been, I've been putting music out, rel you know, almost a song a year yep. and just keeping my head above water and just showing people that I'm still around and, and uh, half of the, the life of a performer or an artist is creating and the other half is performing. So uh, I've been doing that. And uh, then the pandemic reared its ugly head mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I had a, a, a catalog of songs that weren't recorded or were half recorded and I thought to myself I really resigned to the fact that this might be it right. and, I, I, and I said I've got to get this stuff done and out there so um, no sooner did you know that that monumental day when everything shut down or there that re, that those days in march 2020 uh i just pivoted and shifted gears from performing to creating and recording and and had started doing it feverishly because i thought this was it you got to get it out there or it'll never happen so uh I think uh, one of my friends says it's like leaving money on the table not that there's <laughs> i assure you the money is a metaphor these days. It's like just leaving art or leaving something creative. It would be a waste. Right. In my, in my, in my to me. Estimation. Yeah. Well, let me ask you that. So are these songs that go back 10, 20, 15 years? Or are these songs that just go back to 2019 and you got to, okay, I got to just get them out now. I mean, because you said so you they, had some. So actually both. Okay. So actually there are songs that I wrote with both uh, John Kane and the, there's a song with John Kane, John song with Neil Sean, respectively. Um, so it goes far as far back as that. And then um, my very last vocal recording was uh, literally about a month ago. So I've been record. So it's it's a, a span all that time, but especially um, I found myself uh, working with uh, Steve or Jury Band members, ex Valentine. I'm sure your listeners would remember the great Valentine. Um, uh, Craig, Craig Pullman, our keyboardist, he'd come up with a germ and he'd send it off to guitarist Adam Holland and it would filter through Adam and he'd, you know, expand upon it. And then they throw this beautiful, um, you know, landscape of a song idea at me. And then I would just apply a melody and lyrics and we'd arrange it and we'd throw it around and, and we, I would say about a good third of the record is that. And it was so much fun doing that, normally not the case. However, it was very rewarding in that respect. And, and, uh, and some, of our strong, some of the strongest material is by far those songs. Or certainly, and you asked uh, Steve, did you want to do a Taiketo record or a Toll Story record or a, right. or a Journey record? And by no stretch of the imagination did I not. Right want to do a, now of course I take those influences and, uh, and with me and uh, you know those ingredients from a beautiful um, I think John Kane would say uh, jambalaya you know you throw a little cash at this and a little <laughs> yeah and, and I ask mostly for the fans because you know when when you haven't had an album out in a while they come back and they say well is he doing sort of atmospheric jazz fusion or is he giving me what I'm used to and so that's why I ask. So basically, are you giving them what they're used to or are you out on a limb giving them some kind of like, oh, boy? OK, well, yeah, well, that well, 
right? That's a fair way to put it, maybe. It's a great way to put it. And frankly, um, <clears throat> I would be incapable of giving them something so uh, abstract and so left of center. Right. There's always going to be whatever I've, you know, dragged along with me in my little suitcase from ever, you know, whenever and since I saw the Beatles at age six, you know, on television on the Ed Sullivan right. show up until, like I said, the very last vocal recording I did about a month ago. So you pick up, you pick up memories and little nuggets along the way. So it's, oh, but the thing is certainly it's not a, I would never go down the road of, um, trying to emulate Journey per se, right. because I've been approached by many, not large record companies, small small labels that want exactly that. And not to say to cash in, and I understand it, that's a great business model. But the truth of the matter is, these particular labels already have at least half a dozen, because there's already, you know, there's a handful of former journey singers and people that sang within that yep. camp and etc and the last thing i want to do is do that um i've always whether <laughs> now i'm saying this because i've made my living and i've made my bones following mr perry's footsteps yes so it, it might sound like a hypocrite and i understand it sounds a little uh, um, contradictive but right but uh I I take that once again and I run it through my filter and I take the great influences from my band told stories with those great writers and Ty Keto with uh, uh, Brooks St. James um, and his influences and, and the roots and, and we mash it up and it's, it, it's man, we've got something, a, a wonderful song that I wanted to send you prior to this yeah um so that you could get an idea of the other side of the record the heavy side um and then i have a ballad that's going to be you know uh not in i won't ever put it in the pet on the pedestal of open arms but it's and it's certainly as close to a with your love or a lifetime of dreams or something right. like that that we've done ballad wise with uh that was written either by neil or John, um, the famous guru, John Kalodner said to me just before I joined the band, he said, Steve, when you work with these gentlemen, you're working with, you know, experts and, and the top of the top of the heap, he said, yep. keep your eyes and ears open. And that's, pro I don't take a lot of good advice. This, that I took to heart and I did my best to learn from them. And See, I hope and I hope it rubbed off. I hope it rubbed off. Um, I want to get into a little bit of the past because there's there's there's, there's a couple of things that have always uh, puzzled me. Not puzzled me, but made me Kept go, "Hey, I don't." Know. Uh, it says that uh, I've been told that you got your start uh, singing back up in a sense with Michael Schenker. And I've looked through every liner note, and I've looked through every, and I've never seen that. So so tell me the story. Like, was it on a record? Was it just live? Is it okay. fake? I mean, I've I've never been able to validate it. Oh well. Um, you, oh, we got something. Oh, go away. Well, I'll hang out right here. All right, well, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Well, I love that we're playing show and tell. This is great. Back in nineteen eighty four. I don't. Oh, here it is. Right. Nineteen eighty four. They released. Um, they released live in Japan, and they also released. Yeah. Hold on. Save yourself or something. What was it? Was Andy Nye on keys? Uh, well, save yourself was '89. So we have. Uh, here, I've got the the discography 84. in front of me. Uh, rock will never what? die in '84. Super rock. His, go, then, all right. He's smashing his uh, flying V on top of a Mercedes convertible. Is that what you would call that? Uh, do, 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 do. That's probably built to destroy, isn't it? Built to destroy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Destroy. Oh, there you go. Well, that was the. That was the. Well, here's a real quick picture. This is. Well, you see, on, on built to destroy, I, I, if you look and and please, Wikipedia is the worst place, but that's the quickest one right now. 
you're not listed. There's Andy Nye, there's Ted McKenna, there's Chris Glenn, Gary Barden, Michael Schenker, but no, no you. Right. So what I was, okay. was a, not an afterthought, but they were looking <laughs> for a second guitarist and a okay. background vocalist to look, I, I'm not spilling the beans. This is a known fact before there were hard drives and tape machines. They used to hire additional personnel. Right, to double stuff. I mean, that's, that's yeah, stuff. just to double. And <laughs> what I did was I would sing in a uh, a hallway. I would sing behind the curtain, and and it was oh, just on the tour. Vocals. Yeah, so just oh. background vocals. Yeah, yeah. It was just it was only on the tour, and um, I know I was just doing all the high bits. You guys, at the time, I had a squeaky clean oh, wow. high voice. Uh, you know, nowhere near a rock and roll voice that eventually, when you put a little wear and tear in it, you get a little character in there. I was far from that. Let me ask you about that. Hold on. I'm going to take you up on this for a second because Robert Mason, who. Oh, wait, I, but I just wanted to show you that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have a look at that picture. Oh, that is awesome. Look oh, at like, that. And that's Dennis Feldman. Yeah. Feldman. Um, that's oh, gorgeous. Uh, but, but okay, so let, let me quickly ask you this. One thing before I go, before you switch gears. Yeah. Watching, watching that man play guitar every night was going to school, going to rock school. And he's, you know, I, I love his playing to death. Oh, he's the best. But I'm not going to switch gears. I'm going to ask you this because Robert Mason, who sings with Warrant now. Uh-huh. In 95, he was on the Ozzy Osbourne Osmosis tour and they actually had a insulated or insular or whatever were vocal booth in the back that he sang in but you know hidden from everybody and he's right. talked about it it's been in the los angeles times they did a whole story that were not was that your situation where they had you completely walled off and or was it really just sort of you were behind the drums and yeah, uh, yeah was it wasn't that it wasn't that elaborate no it wasn't that elaborate. it was just a mic and strictly background vocals nothing nefarious nothing at all it was all on the up and up it was just you know enhancing the filling out the sound with one more voice and oh, if wow. my guitar chops were anywhere <laughs> near anywhere michael's past, <laughs> my, i would have been playing guitar too but they weren't and so that's the that's the case yeah and and yeah we're and we're not we're not peeling back the curtain i mean kiss on their uh crazy nights tour they had a keyboardist off stage doing something I mean, it's oh, a yeah. story that's been told a thousand times so we're not sure, we're sure. not there's no nda that we're violating right now <laughs> absolutely right um i have to say uh but um, what was that like experience like for you because i mean you were a kid you, you were well, young and fresh and and you're on a major tour where a guy was in the Scorpions and MSG was doing good at the time. That must have been cool. I was coming up um, in New York City. There was back then there was a great New York music scene, yeah. which is you know like everything else has changed is, is no longer the case. And um, uh, you know I would I befriended uh, the folks at Lieber Krebs Management. Yeah, Aerosmith. Yeah, exactly. And in fact. When Steve and Joe left Aerosmith, right. I was in the, I was with a young lady named Marge Raymond, who went to go and start a band called Renegade. Did you ever hear of that? So Bob Mayo, maybe and Marge Raymond, joined up with the rest of the rhythm section and they formed a band Renegade. When Marge, okay. yeah. So when Marge came back, I joined her backup band, and it was from there Paul O'Neill who you may be aware of from Trans-Siberian Orchestra mm -hmm. and Sabotage mm -hmm. um, Production. Yep. Very and much he also produced one of the Aerosmith records. Uh, he was the gentleman who gave me my start and sent me out with Michael because they also handled Michael. Wow. And, and, and Paul was a, is a genius. Paul, was, Paul, you know, he was just the sweetest guy, sweetheart mm -hmm. of a guy. And... Uh, and 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 I thank him. I'll always be in debt and and thankful for it. He, he gave me the shot. He gave me the the chance that you know everybody waits for all their life. You know. And I will say it again: a complete genius. You look at Trans Siberian Orchestra on paper, and you think this is a disaster. I mean, heavy metal guys doing Christmas. I mean, and yet it is one of the most anticipated shows year after year. He really created something unique. And that's rare to do. 
100%. And this is a shoe in this type, kind of thing is a shoe in in Europe, right? Hands down. In America, it could have gone either way. But man, did they, they embraced it and it blew up so big that they had to have two touring companies, one East Coast yep. and one West Coast because the seasonal thing, they didn't, they couldn't get to, to you know, as right. many cities in it. So they said, well, let's get, create a second band. Yep. And they did. And they grabbed the best of the best, you know, that, you know, that were on the cusp of making it themselves, that he had a good eye and ear for, for talent. And he grabbed, you know, Jeff Scott Soto for one. Yep. Uh, these are guys I know, David Z from Zero Two, who we lost. Yep. He was, I think I saw him first with Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And I saw this great bass player and, you know. You such, were just out at the Zero Two thing the other day with Joey Casada and, and uh, yeah. Matthew Klein and all those wonderful All those guys, yeah. Oh, what, what, what a great bunch. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a lot of fun. So anyway, TSO. So did jo that, did yeah. Joey try to sell you his book, by the way? I've got one. <laughs> I love him. Joey's Joey. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're, oh, wait, you, he's played with you. Hasn't he? He toured he's with you. Sat in with us a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. Luckily uh, I've had the uh, enormous pleasure of having him sit in with us and, and suffer us a couple of times. He's got a great energy, great drummer. Yeah. Uh, you know, whenever we can, we'll, you know, I have a revolving seat. With his, now we filled it with my son. Who's, who's, he's the steady guy. But whenever Joey's, you know, at the top of the list, his top of the list. Yeah. So, all right. So let me let me get into the into the journey stuff for, for just a moment, because it came down to the fact where they said, you've lost your voice. You can't sing. We're a big machine. We got to keep moving. Too bad. Pretty uh, much. Was that was that it pretty much? And, and they just sort of said, because Jeff Scott Soto tells the story of. I got to the to the to the to the show and we didn't have sound check and my first night I had to sing without a sound check <laughs> and and I had to get wow. you know baptism by fire was it just thank you Steve out you go too bad well well yeah I mean the writing was on the wall because I was my voice health was declining okay and uh I I I tried and I threw so much money at vocal teachers, vocal therapists. And uh, to be honest with you, I went to one that I went to some great people that helped me. And I went to one that just didn't quite understand the picture. I was underwater, so to speak. And rather than nurse me back to health, he piled brick after gotcha. brick on top of it. And he, but, but what was it? Was it nodes? Was it just... No, it was pre nodule it was it was, it was uh, exhaustion. I mean, my vocal cords were beat up and they needed to rest. You know, it was. What gets you there? Um, you know, it's a long story. I'll make it very short. I have uh, issues with infections, whether it be sinus right. infections or right. whenever we look with something lays on here that comes down from here and it doesn't it never turns off you're you're behind an eight ball constantly right. and i had a chronic i have chronic to this day i have chronic issues okay so uh i can't do it five times a week i could do it one or twice a week and there i can maintain it okay with the right medication uh you know it's always like living with a monk i've 10 years i haven't drank i haven't celebrated like all you nice folks have it you know raise a glass and all right well, well I, I haven't drank it uh, in, since i was 28 so oh look at you wow <laughs> but, so, I, but I, I had a heart condition and they said you can't drink and i went okay <laughs> okay well yeah so you know uh, but anyway getting back to that um i had to make a lot of life choices and they did the you know what when they let me go it was the best thing that they ever did for me because frankly it was a sigh of relief it hurt me more than anything I had ever experienced. Right. However, it was such a huge relief because now I could go on and and heal and uh, perhaps maybe, you know, learn to tell the tale and maybe sing again. So, you know what, when you're up there, yeah. you fall, so it's a, it's a hell of a fall. It is a hell of a fall, but had you done another year or two, it could have been so devastating and you could have been in such a depressive state that you might not have been able to pick yourself up 
and be surely. where we are today. Surely, surely, surely. There, there's always a flip side to all of this. So, you know, now you're here. Now you're making your own music. You're still going out there doing the tours with Lou Graham and the, the Asia guys. and all. So, listen. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking, uh, basically, I'm in a good place. I'm in a happy place. And this is where I'm yeah. comfortable. And, you know, I'll tell you what, you know, you when you reach my age, and you can still go out there and and, and sing. I'm I'm helpful for uh, thankful for every day that that happens. I'm gonna quickly and check and like you were just saying, yeah. I've had I've been fortunate these last two years to create and write enough material for a record and get an album together that I'm so excited to finally share with everybody. Right. And and I think um, now the album says summer of 2022. Is there a is there a more sort of targeted date that we have? Well, only I would be more specific only because there are two songs that are stuck in my craw. I think crow or craw that have just given me a little trouble mix wise. Right. And I every time I think I'm just about finished, something pops into my head. Oh, we've got to fix this, or we've got to add this. And I guess this could go on forever, but I'm giving myself the deadline of of the summer. So I've when got you get two... a song like that, don't you at some point just say, don't you have to just fish or cut bait, if, if you know what I mean? Don't you just sort of say, it either goes on or I just have to leave it off? Yes, if, they, if they're if they like your third or fourth or fifth child. Right. But the ones I'm thinking about, one in particular, I get a great a res, a response and reaction from folks. And it may very be, be one of my best written songs. So I just have to make sure, you know, it might not ne need something added. It might something yeah, need to be subtracted. It just has to be right. All right. I'll tell you what. You send it to me, and I'll tell you exactly what it needs. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix it for you. I'll do that. I know how to do that stuff. Um, I'll, do I'll ask you one more uh, journey question, then we'll we'll focus on 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 just the now, um, and and. If this, if the question is beyond means, just you can ignore it. But there was a there was a suggestion that at that time, as things were coming to an end, that you needed some help with the vocals, and there were some uh, piped in vocals or some backing vocals, and it wasn't necessarily all live all the time. Is that fair to say? It's fair to assume. Okay. Yeah, and, and correct uh, me if I'm wrong. Tell me I'm an ass if if I if the question is rude. No, 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 no. It's the question everybody wants to ask, and you're right. the first one who is brave enough to ask. Or um, yeah, because I, personally, if if you want to tell me I'm an ass and and hang up, then that's okay. No, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. uh, I I could only respond in this way. Right. And this is as truthful as I can be. Right. And I'm not going to lie. I went out every night. Right. And I went out. And I sang every show, right? Every word, every note, right? If something else appeared from somewhere else, a magical enhancement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no. I it was not of my doing. Gotcha, gotcha. And 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 by the way, for... to say, however, I will say in this day and age, this is more of a norm. Than oh, not. It's it's absolutely an industry standard. And and I will be very clear. If you are playing in an arena, mm -hmm. chances are that it is being enhanced. Period. However, End of story. Just to be fair. Every and, band. Almost you know, every band. And you know, and to history, maybe, maybe not, but I went out every night because And gave it your best. I gave it my best. Okay. And I, the, there came a point where they did me a favor and said, Steve, your best is not good enough. And that was just the truth. Okay. Now, now, had I been a, a band member for 30 years, we may have ha had a sit down and said, you know, let's take, let's cancel the tour. But the tour had just got started. It was right. a huge tour with Def Leppard, you know, massive, wonderful tour of the summer, one of the biggest in the summer. And, uh, and let's face it, if they could, if they could walk away from Mr. Steve Perry, um, yeah, yeah. one of the greatest voices that we'll ever hear in our lifetime. I, it, it was not an, it, 
it was acceptable at a, at a drop of a, a click of a, a finger and, and a drop of a hat that I have to accept this. Yeah. Get over yourself, Steve. This is not personal. And in fact, Neil said, he, he said to me, Steve, this is nothing personal. This is strictly business. And frankly, he was 100% right. He had obligations. He had mm-hmm. an entire tour in front of him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he had somebody waiting in the wings, whether it was Jeff or there could have been, frankly, there, there's so many great singers out there. Yeah. It's and listen, not- it's the music business. It's not the music hugs and kisses. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. I think and, he may have followed up with it's the music piss. Yeah. And, uh, and not I'll, the this is part, but he, yeah, <laughs> right. Music. And, and here I'll, 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 I'll throw this in. Uh, two years ago, I was at a sound check for, for a major, major band in an arena. And they were actually sound checking crowd swell because they wanted extra noise oh. to make it sound like people were cheering louder. Great idea. <laughs> yes. I love it. Hey, I love it. Yeah, but you know what? I'm I'm all in favor of all this stuff. I don't think it's cheating. When you're paying 300 bucks for a ticket, you want a show. You don't want the guy that has the 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 hay fever and the you want the show you paid for. I'm all for it. Yeah, there's a balance. There Let's, is. Uh, you know what? There's an absolutely there's a balance and you know, maybe that balance got disrupted. Yeah. Or maybe it didn't, but what happened is water on the bridge for me I, I can't look back i have to look forward and, and that's what i'm doing yeah. as they did and they found great success with arnell and uh you know i love yeah. him i love his voice I, and i love the music they're making and i and i'm, I'm happy for them and i hope i hope that's reciprocal i hope that's uh, yeah and i see all of this as positive i mean if you want the new song which is out now sounds great the the album is coming out soon uh, it's given us it's given the world arnell I, I don't I see any i don't see any negative in any of this quite frankly listen it's all good and you got to have joey casada as your drummer so oh so, you know what I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you what now now I, when you first get married mm-hmm in a band it is a honeymoon and we journey and i had such a honeymoon it was grand and then the honeymoon was over <laughs> so so they went on and got remarried and so did i i had a new lease in life and i found joy in the in the the former band members of valentine um they're wonderful. I mean, when you can call your, you know, I think it was, it was, had to be Keith Richards. He used to call his band. It's like a gang, but it's certainly, if it, if it's lucky enough to be like a family, you've, you've hit gold. And that's the way that it is when my guys now, and the minute it gets a little, you know, a little tension, a little something, well, you know what? You work people in and out. And I just, it's important for you and everybody to uh, surround yourself with positive people. And yeah. um, that's where I'm at, and that's what keeps a smile on my face. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And as I a wish fan, that on everybody, I hope everybody achieves that. Whether they're selling hot dogs on the corner of Fifth Avenue and Fifty Seventh Street in Manhattan, or they're you know swinging a hammer, you know, three stories up, building a home, or baking, or whatever. If, if you're around good people, it, it rubs off and it's contagious. Yeah. You know? And and as a fan, I will look back and, and look at Shine with Taiketo and look at Arrival and Red 13 and Generations and I'll say thank you because those are great albums with great music. I appreciate that. And your voice <laughs> is terrific. I appreciate it. I'll tell you a funny thing was the demise of Tall Stories, which was, I think, one of my shining moments vocally. Um, things were bleak and dark, had gotten dark, and I found those guys or they found me. And boy, was that a shot in the arm because want to talk about joy and, and laughter and camaraderie. They were a great bunch to be around as short lived as that was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I'm still looking forward to seeing the solo band uh, last year or, or during the pandemic. Uh, you were going to play Malone, New York at the Franklin County Fair with Lou Graham. I set that up and then it got canceled. And then you came back last year, but I couldn't cross the border. Right. Because of the pandemic. So the show that I helped set up, 
I couldn't go see. Ah, it was a good show. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. I'm, I'm sure it was. Uh, it was a great show. <laughs> It was, terrific. it was the best show you've ever had, I'm assuming, right? It was a good. Uh, well, we're going to make it up to you. Good. So we're let's. Maybe Chatham. I don't know if that's not quite far as Malone, but. No, yeah, well, you need to. We could, have, well, we could have thrown a stone across the border, I think. It, it is literally Malone. 40 minutes from my house, but I wasn't allowed to cross the border because of the Another pandemic. Time. Another time. Uh, always, a, always a pleasure. We've talked online and stuff, but this was great to do. I'm glad that you're back with this new album. I think it is going to be fantastic. I think the fans are going to love it. Uh, strong melodic rock. How can you go wrong with that? You can't. You know, here's the deal. I'm hitting, a, there's a wide spectrum. There's a wide um, spectrum of different kind of material. Uh, I, I said this before that, you know, I just did a, an article for LA Weekly. They asked mm -hmm. me what my favorite record was. And the first thing that came to mind was Smoke In by Humble Pie because it was my first concert and it was a f after the Beatles, it jettisoned me into rock and roll, you know, just everything. However, I think it was the Beatles really, uh, Sergeant Pepper that did it for me. And uh, where was I going? I just had a, a moment, I yes. dare say senior. Um, oh, when you think of the Beatles, when you think yeah. of the White Album or Sgt. Pepper's, they don't stick to just this style. They they had it all over the place, mm -hmm. and it made it so different, so interesting. And you and you can you know, it, it, look, I love Kiss One, Kiss Kiss, right? But it had a thing. Nobody did it before, and so you can listen to it from first cut to th the last cut. And your charge, and it's fantastic. But a Beatle record like Sgt. Pepper's, it takes you to all around the world. You know what I mean? Stylistically. And so what I'm trying to do with this record, or what I'm certainly not trying to do, is bore you. So I want to keep your interest up. I want you to be able to listen to it from beginning to end without turning it off. And that's my goal. And I hope that I achieve that. Yeah, I hope so too. Seven ways till Sunday. Seven ways till Sunday. Sorry, I got a, a, a dog that started to bark in, in the background. But yeah, I'm looking, I'm very much looking forward to it. It'll be out later this summer. And as we say in Montreal, merci, Steve. I hope you enjoyed this today and I'll have it up soon. Man, I thank you very much, Mitch. Absolutely. Pleasure and all the best to you. I look forward to many more of your podcasts down the road. Thank you, sir. Merci bien. All right, perfect. Let me, let me stop it. Now, I have.